Welcome back. We have now learned that the viscosity mu of a fluid is the ratio of the shear stress tau to the shear rate gamma dot. And it is measured with a device called a viscometer, such as this cone and plate viscometer, in which the cone on top rotates with an angular velocity, producing a constant shear rate in the fluid between the cone and the stationary plate. The shear stresses in the fluid result in a torque that's transmitted from the cone to the plate and can be measured at the motor or the stationary plate. From the measurement of the torque, you can thereby calculate the shear stress and from the shear rate get the viscosity. The viscosity of whole blood is not constant. As the shear rate increases, the viscosity of whole blood decreases like paint or ketchup, whole blood is a shear thinning fluid. There are two reasons for this property that are shown in the experiment. First, when albumin is added to the blood, as seen in the lower curve, it prevents the red blood cells from aggregating into rouleau. And this significantly decreases the viscosity at low shear rates, but not at high shear rates, suggesting that the ability of the red blood cells to aggregate contributes to the higher viscosity at low shear rate. But at higher shear, shear rates these aggregates break up, so the viscosity at higher shear rates is the same whether albumin is added or not. Why does the viscosity continue to decrease at higher shear rates? This experiment also helps to explain that. Here is the result when a fixative was added to the blood cells to make them rigid. You can see that that increases the viscosity of the whole blood, but it also eliminates the shear rate dependent decrease in viscosity, the shear thinning behavior. So this suggests that at higher shear rates, when the rouleau or aggregates of red cells have broken up, the continued decrease in viscosity is a result of the deformability of the red blood cells. Here we see the results of the same experiment but shown as a function of hematocrit, which is the volume fraction of red blood cells in whole blood, and in normal whole blood is usually about 45%. Zero hematocrit means there are no red blood cells, so this is serum. And you'll notice both that at high shear rate in blue and in low shear rate in black, the viscosity of serum is the same. However, as the hematocrit increases, the viscosity rises, but it rises more at lower shear rates than it does at higher shear rate. So the shear thinning behavior of whole blood is seen by the difference between the relative viscosity at 0.052 per second versus 52 per second is dependent on the presence of the red blood cells. And the more red blood cells, the more shear thinning behavior we see. Now the dotted lines here show the effects of preventing red blood cell aggregation with albumin. Note that by preventing rouleau formation with Ringer's solution, the viscosity is greatly reduced at low shear rates, comparing the dotted black line with the solid black line. And this reduction increases with hematocrit, showing the importance of the rouleau formation at low shear rates. In contrast, at high shear rates in the blue curves, the effect of the Ringer's solution is negligible because the red blood cells have already disaggregated at the high shear rates. So there's no additional effect of the Ringer's solution. So here we see what these aggregates or rouleau of red blood cells look like at rest or very low shear rates. The flat surface of the discoid red blood cells gives them a large surface area to make contact with and adhere to each other, forming these rouleaux which have been described as looking like a stack of coins. The strength of the aggregation depends on the physical properties of the red blood cells, such as their deformability and surface charge. In blood plasma, macromolecular plasma proteins, especially fibrinogen, interact with the negatively charged sialic acid in glycoproteins on the surface of the red blood cell membranes to facilitate aggregation. While the shear rates in the circulation are mostly high enough to break up rouleau, red blood cell aggregates can be seen in the microcirculation, especially the venules.
While increasing red blood cell aggregation is generally thought to increase viscosity in vivo, some contradictory results suggest that in some smaller vessels, Rouleau may actually help the red blood cells to align more in the center of the flow and decrease their contribution to flow resistance. Interestingly, athletic mammalian species like antelope and dogs actually exhibit higher red blood cell aggregability, which implies that aggregation might be able to enhance the red blood cell throughput in the circulation and improve tissue oxygenation. However, high concentrations of fibrinogen and other plasma proteins can cause an excess of red blood cell aggregation or clumping, uh, although some plasma proteins such as albumin, which was used in the previous experiment, actually retard rouleau formation. An increase in the ratio of red blood cells to plasma volume, as seen in pathologies such as polycythemia and hypovolemia, increases rouleau formation and accelerates the sedimentation rate, increasing a measurement made in the clinic known as the ESR, or erythrocyte sedimentation rate. An excess of rouleau can sometimes be an indication or a cause of diseases, including sepsis, multiple myeloma, inflammatory diseases, cancer, and diabetes mellitus. In some of these diseases, such as diabetic retinopathy, increased rouleau formation is thought to actually lead to microvessel damage by increasing the apparent viscosity and thereby restricting flow of blood. Red blood cell clumping can also occur as an allergic reaction to certain antibiotics. So while blood is able to form these rouleau and rouleau can be seen in the circulation, usually as the shear rate increases to normal rates, typical of most vessels in the circulation, the rouleau start to break up. Red blood cells are typically about eight microns in diameter and two microns thick, but they routinely flow through capillaries that are under five microns in diameter. In fact, they are so highly deformable that they can squeeze through a slit less than one micron wide, similar to the dimensions of the endothelial slits in the spleen, as seen in this realistic computational simulation. Older red blood cells become less deformable and get trapped in the spleen, where they are phagocytosed. Red blood cell deformability is also affected in some diseases, notably sickle cell disease, a serious genetic disorder in which red blood cells become stiff and sickle-shaped, results in anemia and many other complications including infection, stroke and kidney failure. A more common disease that results in decreased red blood cell deformability is the erythrocyte phase of the mosquito-borne parasitic disease, malaria, which can cause multiple cardiovascular complications. Note the unusual knobs on the surface of the red blood cell that's been infected by the plasmodium parasite in this sample from a malaria patient. Red blood cells are deformed by the fluid flow, which in turn reduces their contribution to blood viscosity by causing them to become more aligned with the flow streamlines and reducing their viscous drag. As shear rate increases, discoid-shaped red blood cells become more elongated and adopt a so-called slipper shape. Before, at even higher shear rates, they start to fold over and take on what's described as a parachute shape. This shape tends to reduce the tumbling of the cells in the flow and align the cells closer to the middle of the flow. So whole blood is a non-Newtonian fluid. Here are some different types of non-Newtonian fluid. Recall that in a Newtonian fluid, the shear stress is linearly proportional to the shear rate where the slope is the viscosity. So this is the curve for a Newtonian fluid with a low viscosity, and this is a curve for a Newtonian fluid with a high viscosity. Non-Newtonian fluids can be shear thinning, like a pseudoplastic fluid such as paint, in which the slope decreases with increasing shear rate, or shear thickening, so-called dilettante fluids, in which the viscosity increases with shear rate. Corn starch and water suspensions or wet cement a good example of dilettante shear thickening fluids. Whole blood is actually more like a so-called casin fluid 
which is a shear thinning fluid, but also has a finite yield stress shown here as tau sub c. That yield stress must be overcome before the fluid can flow at all. So at very low shear stresses, a casin fluid behaves like a solid. Another example of a non-Newtonian fluid with a finite shear stress is a Bingham plastic. Once it's overcome its yield stress tau b here, then its shear rate to shear stress relationship is linear. Toothpaste and clay are examples of Bingham plastics. Various mathematical models for approximating the rheological properties of non-Newtonian fluids have been proposed. So here again we have the linear equation between shear stress and shear rate for a Newtonian fluid and many of the non-Newtonian equations are power laws. So we can see here for the pseudoplastic fluid and the dilettante fluid tau is proportional to the power of gamma dot where in the pseudoplastic fluid the power n is less than 1 and in the dilettante shear thickening fluid the power n is greater than 1. In the Bingham plastic, as we mentioned, there is a constant yield stress, tau b, and another example of this type of material is the Hirschli-Buckley fluid, which has a constant shear stress, tau h, and a nonlinear uh, dependence on the shear rate. But the equation that works best for whole blood was first developed for printer's ink and is called Casson's equation, in which the square root of the shear stress is equal to the square root of the yield stress plus the square root of the viscosity times the shear rate. Note that in the Bingham plastic and the Casson fluid, the nonlinearity is purely a function of the yield stress. If the yield stress is zero in these equations, then we recover the linear Newtonian relation because now we could square both sides of this equation. As the shear rate gets larger, the effect of the yield stress on the relationship between the shear stress and the shear rate gets smaller and smaller, and Bingham plastics and Casson fluids become more like Newtonian fluids at higher shear rates. That's why the viscosity coefficient in the Casson fluid equation is referred to as mu infinity. It's the viscosity that you would measure at a very high or infinite shear rate in the Casson fluid. There are some interesting consequences of the Casson fluid-like behavior of whole blood. For example, in a tube flow, a finite pressure shown here as PC is required in order for blood to start flowing. Here, the pressure flow relation is plotted as the square root of flow versus the square root of pressure. And because of the nature of the Casson's law, this equation tends towards a straight line after the flow becomes developed. But this property of a finite pressure being required to flow blood can be seen when blood is in a capillary tube, even when surface tension is removed by eliminating the air-liquid interface with another liquid, such as saline. This is evidence for the yield stress of whole blood. Another consequence of the Casson fluid-like property of whole blood is the appearance of what is known as plug flow in blood vessels. We will learn later that for tube flow, the velocity profile is a parabola. Now we know that the shear rate is the gradient of the velocity, which means that the shear rate will be zero at the center of the flow and maximum at the walls. Since the shear stress is related to the shear rate, this means that you must go some finite distance away from the center line before the shear stress in the tube flow exceeds the yield stress. Inside that radius, the shear stress would be below the yield stress and therefore the fluid wouldn't shear. Rather, the velocity would be constant and this is what's known as plug flow. Now, the yield stress of whole blood is low, only about 1 to 6 millipascals, which means the radius of the plug flow zone is typically low. But this diameter is also dependent on the vessel radius. And in a small vessel with a diameter of about 100 microns, the diameter of the plug flow zone may be 20 to 30 microns. Plug flow is thought to increase the efficiency of red blood cell transport in the circulation.
So this has been a brief discussion of the non-Newtonian properties of fluids, in particular whole blood.